come with me in my bubble car. We can have a real cool time. We can watch the moon through the windows and we're snug as a bug. After the defeat of Germany in the Second World War, the bottom fell out of the market for German aeroplane manufacturers, so Messerschmitt stopped making planes for the Luftwaffe and instead turned their hand to making cars. With all the finesse of a cockpit without wings, these cars were designed for strength and economy. Oh, you've got to be strong to get out of one of these. This is what most people would call a bubble car, but a microcar fanatic would know that it's a Messerschmitt KR200, which probably explains why it looks like a cockpit with mudguards bolted on the side. The dash is very basic. You do get a speedo, but you don't get a petrol gauge. So, one of the joys of this car was wondering when you were going to run out of fuel. What little power there is is delivered to the rear wheel by a two-stroke single-cylinder 200cc engine. Messerschmitt also made a 175cc model, but this engine found its way into the sport. It wasn't a great success. Only three were sold in the UK, and this is believed to be the last remaining one. Getting in was a bit of a problem. Try doing this in a miniskirt. Still no fuel gauge, but this one does have a clock. Both these cars have four forward gears, but to select reverse, you need to make the engine spin in the opposite direction. To do this, you press the ignition switch, which reverses the dynastart. In traffic, it looks and feels small. In fact, riding in the sport is a bit like being strapped to a bullet on wheels. There is a severe lack of suspension, which can be put down to the aircraft heritage. But the Messerschmitt is head-turning, light, fast, and downright thrilling on the open road. There's nothing I would change. She doesn't need improvements. She's much too nice to it's a shame the sport didn't take off. Its 1960s design is a bit more popular nowadays, but then we don't really have the weather for it. For real motoring comfort, Messerschmitt style, they came up with a remarkable innovation, a four-wheeled car known as the Tiger. The Tiger is just the car for a weekend jaunt zipping around the country lanes, and like the other Messerschmitts, it will comfortably accommodate two. Let's go. Now this was serious bubble car motoring. Launched at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 1957, the Tiger was a storm on the rally circuits for the next six years. Powered by a 500cc engine, the pickup and handling is tremendous, but even when it was made, the Tiger was expensive. Import duties bumped up the price to £650, a working man's annual wage. Today, it still costs more than a Mazda MX-5. But the beauty of these cars is their handling. More than 40,000 Messerschmitts were built, and according to the Schmidt Owners Club, there's still about 600 being driven around Britain by Starwatch Smitties today. The driving may be fun, but here in the back, things are far less entertaining. I can understand why the Germans call this Snow White's coffin. If you don't get sunstroke, you will almost certainly go dead. Won't you come with me in my bubble car? In the end, though, it wasn't the noise or the heat which drove Messerschmitts off the road. It was the good old British Mini. When you're near at hand, as we snuggle in the bubble, away from any trouble, snuggle in my bubble car. I say, I think these bubble cars are rather jolly, then.